Hey guys, in this video, I want to share with you five principles that have allowed us to build an e-commerce business that generates between two and five million dollars per month. I want to show you insights in terms of the hiring, making sure that your team performs to the highest standard so that you can have more freedom for yourself while your business is still generating a lot of revenue and a lot of profit. These principles, a lot of them I, I, I've just like had to learn by mistake, even after reading the book. Sometimes you're reading the book and you simply don't get it, right? And only when you're having this like pain painful experience that's where like where you actually start getting it that's what happened to me principle number one that you have to convey to your team and you have to set up the culture like this in your team is a radical transparency sometimes you know things don't work out between people especially in teams if someone is not performing well for instance you know you call them out and if you are not performing or you're not doing what you're supposed to do your team should call you out because you don't want to create a culture where everyone is like afraid to tell you stuff like in in Russia, you know, for instance, there's a Putin. Everyone is so scared of him. They're afraid to bring him like bad news. You don't want to create this culture. This culture literally will just create a very, very dangerous situation. If someone is good at something, you tell them. If someone is bad at something, you tell them. The best way is just to tell them straight, we have an issue. Here's what's expected from you in this position. This is what needs to be done. And for some reason it's not done. Okay. So what is the issue? What, what I can help you with, what the team can help you with so we can help you succeed in this role. Everyone is on the same page no one is keeping you know in our country to say like stone behind their back talent observation some people are good at certain things are not as good at certain things right so you have to observe and monitor and just like detach your opinions from it what i used to do in the past is like if i was good at something i would try to force other people to be good at that and they naturally were not people were upset i was upset everyone would be upset because the expectations were not aligned so if you let's say you have a media buyer looking at numbers analyzing crunching the data so everything's perfect on that side but then on the creative side and then we get that creative kind of like down to the high standard then you need to bring some want to help them understand that so what we usually do is like we bring external consultants to kind of like br bring that external like expertise that person might be good at like 80 90 percent of things but they just need one or two little things that they need help with so if you help them to figure that out the person will be invaluable asset to your company so observe the talents and see who's good at what and allocate your resources accordingly number three is from generalist to laser focus every company starts small and scrappy that's just the way it is apple started in the garage. Ray Dalio started his hedge fund in the, in the bedroom, which is like now like 60 or 100 billion dollar hedge fund, maybe more. At first, people are generalists. When they're like generalists, like they can do a lot of different things and they can do those like okay-ish. And that comes to the previous point, talent observation. You have to put each person on your team, ideally in a position where they have the highest probability of succeeding. For example, if someone is good at like copywriting, give them like copyright or they're good in conversion optimization, put them conversion optimization, make sure they have like enough volume of work to do it like full time. But this is where you will see their talent shine. As you're building your team, maybe you're already doing like multiple seven figures, you want to be looking for specialists. You want to be looking for laser focused people like on specific skill set that they can bring to your team and they can just focus on that. Number four is work addict. If someone has work addict, I mean, you can train them, you can give them skill set. If someone doesn't have that, then it will be hard. Don't make your hiring decisions just on the fact that you like the person. You want to be looking for the work addict. And the way to do it is like, okay, so tell me about your previous three positions. What were the assignments? What were the goals for that position? What did you actually achieve? Now I can go and verify. Okay, cool. So when I call this person in that previous company, what do you think they'll they'll say about your performance? <laughs> Oftentimes that people just will tell them. Success leaves clues. For example, some of our clients in our ESS program, they hired media buyers and the media buyer was previously plumber. Plumber, I mean, you have to have like a good work addict. Some of the media buyers we have on our team, they didn't have any media buying experience. They were just like hardworking people. So they're able to figure stuff out and just kind of like become one of the best. Those are the people you want to train because those people will be able to learn uh, the skills. At least in a few months, person can have like very good understanding of what needs to be done like 80 90 percent but it has to be the right person in the first place number five is incentive paradigm so at some point you have to understand what your team wants to do what their goals are and just help them achieve their goals you want to align what you want with what people want and this way first of all you'll be competitive in the marketplace because if you give like good incentive structure then high performance people usually attracted to that and number two if you have the right like incentive structure you'll incentivize the right thing so for example for media buyer that's like amount of profit at a specific ROAS, right? So if they do this, that's their compensation. If they do this with higher ROAS, they'll get paid more. So that would be layered. The more they achieve, the more they get paid. 
and so it's kind of like win-win for everyone if you want like a video on this just comment incentive below and i'll shoot like another video where I go kind of like more in depth with specific examples and case studies how to structure the incentive programs for different positions because the worst thing you can do is like incentivize people to do the wrong thing so for example if you have like sales team you incentivize your people on, on, on the amounts of calls that they make not the amount of sales that they bring in that's what you'll get. You'll get a lot of calls, but not a lot of sales. This is it, guys. Um, let me know if you found it valuable. Let me know if you have any comments. I'm checking those comments uh, personally and any other topics you want me to cover. Comment incentive. If we get sufficient amount of comments on that, then I'll shoot another video on incentive structures for different positions of company so you can build an A player team and you can absolutely destroy it and still have some freedom, still be able to enjoy life as an entrepreneur. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss videos like this and um, see you guys in the next one.